The ambiguous case. How do you determine if it's one, two, or no triangles? This is one of those topics that I've seen students struggle with year after year. And it doesn't matter how basic or intuitive I think my explanation can be, sometimes it just takes a while to set in. So if you're that student, don't worry, give yourself some time. But what I'm gonna try to do in this video is give you something you can rely on visually as well as algebraically to understand as well as check when you have one, two, or no triangle. But to get into understanding of one, two, or no triangle, it's important for us to focus on a right triangle. Now in this right triangle we have an angle A and then we also have the height and then we're going to have the hypotenuse and let's just call this C kind of our little O to the Pythagorean theorem. If I wanted to find the height then I can use the relationship of our sine function. I could say the sine of A is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse right because that's going to be the opposite of my right triangle. Then to go ahead and solve for H I could just go ahead and multiply C on both sides and then H is going to equal to a C times the sine of A. That's very important because that tells us what the height is of this triangle triangle. Now, when we're talking about the ambiguous case, more often than not, we're not talking about a right triangle. We're talking about an oblique triangle. And an oblique triangle is basically a triangle that is a non-right triangle. This third side is not going to be perfectly perpendicular to this base. It could actually be bigger or smaller. But hopefully you guys recognize if my third side of my triangle is shorter than the height, then no triangle is going to exist because it doesn't matter how much I rotate this third side around here. I'm never going to have a closed figure. So when I'm looking at a triangle and I can identify what the height is and compare it to my third side, which is is going to be a all i'm going to look at is if a is less than h and if a is less than h then no triangle is going to exist now the next scenario that we can look at is the one we kind of start off with if a is equal to h then we exactly have one triangle right because obviously you can see a is going to be the height of the triangle now let's go and look at another scenario let's say that A is going to be larger than H, right? So it's going to create a triangle, but it's also going to be larger than C. So let's say it looks like this. And because now what I want you to do is I'm not going to be lengthening C, but notice here, it doesn't make a triangle. It doesn't matter how I rotate this. The only time it's going to make one triangle is when it falls along this side of the base here. So when A is going to be larger than H, we know it's going to create a triangle. But when A is going to be larger than C, then one triangle is also going to exist. Now, one thing I can do is I can just extend this side because again, remember guys, we don't know what the length of that side is. The only thing we are given is going to be our angle A, our side length C, and our side length A. Now the last one is the tricky one because this one is again has to be larger than H, right? That's going to have to be a created triangle. But now it cannot be larger than C. We know if it's larger than C, right? It's only going to create that one triangle over there. But let's pretend here that it's now less than C, right? So here I have a triangle and then if I rotate that in you can see there's a really really small triangle that also exists. So whenever my A is going to be larger than H but it's going to be less than C, then what I have is what we call the two case solution. So therefore I have an angle there and I also have an angle triangle there. When A is going to be larger than my H, but less than C, I have two triangles that exist. So there you go, ladies and gentlemen, that is basically it. Take a picture, stare at it, but more importantly, practice going through this because the more practice that you have with identifying one, two or no triangles, the faster and easier it's going to be. Sometimes you can just look at the triangle. Sometimes you need to just plug in the values, but the more practice you get, the better you're going to get at understanding when one, two or no triangles are going to exist for your ambiguous case. Now, last thing I did forget to mention is this ambiguous case is only going to happen when we have a side side angle relationship, meaning we only have one angle and then two sides given. When we have angle, angle, side or angle, side, angle, we don't need to worry about the ambiguous case. Now, if this video is helpful for you, please consider subscribing or give me a super thanks. I have more examples in the playlist and resources down below or check out the next video I have for you here.